Let's do the witch's world. Or word, not world. Okay, years ago you sold your firstborn to a witch. But with your recent dating history, it doesn't look like she'll be getting her end of the bargain anytime soon. So the witch's witch has offered to help you build a suitable someone to settle down with. Will you choose the sweet farmer, the confident writer, or the brooding bladesmith? And there are, are these really your only options? Let's um, jump in. A witch's word. Okay. I guess I sucked at the, the robot game too. Okay. You sold your firstborn child to a witch years ago to save your mother from a deadly disease. It's kind of loud in my ear. Since then, you've been less than successful in the dating world. If you don't find a mate soon, the witch will never get her part of the bargain. We don't want to slide a witch, do we? It shouldn't surprise you when she shows up at your door one day with a stern expression. My dear, we must talk about your deal. Though she looks no older than you, the very air around her tingles with power. You can't argue. You get her situated at your kitchen table with a cup of tea before you try to explain. I've tried. I really have. I'm just bad at this. I'm not cruel, she cuts in with a bemused little laugh. I won't force you to procreate with someone you don't want to be with. I'm merely here to, to help you towards happiness, and it seems you could use the help. Blind dates arranged by a witch. How did your life come to this? Well, you say hesitantly. I guess it couldn't hurt. The witch's pleased smile reminds you of the curl of a cat's tail before it pounces. So, she starts with a clap of her hands. Let's find you a man. Alright. Here's our choices. I guess we'll have to do all three of them at some point. Or blind date all three to figure out which one. <clears throat> and which is catty. <laughs> I'm sure her cattiness um, goes over my head. Okay, we have Ellis the bookbinder, Trevor the writer, Arthur the bladesmith. Um, is Ellis like Joe Goldberg? What kind of writing does Trevor do? Let's go with the bladesmith. You meet him at his workshop. He is broad-shouldered, and dark-skinned, with an intense gaze that meets yours directly, but his smile is warm, and his hand is gentle when he takes yours. You ex look exactly like she described you, he says with a laugh. Oh, she didn't tell me much about you, but it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry to have uh, we had to meet at the workshop. I don't get much of a chance to step away these days with business, what it is. Not that I was much of a socializer before, he adds with a slightly embarrassed expression. I'm not much a people person myself. I mean, I have a witch setting me up on dates. You get a laugh out of him at that. True enough, maybe you're a ma we're a match set. Would you like to sit outside and have a bite to eat? I brought a little something. Why is it a little laugh? Oh, a warm and rumbling laugh. Hmm. Um, a picnic sounds perfect. You talk. He is serious about his work, serious about life. 
serious about starting a family, but he smiles easily when he tells you tales about your mother. <clears throat> okay, but he smiles easily when you tell tales about your mother and her obsession with feeding the local imps, and laughs freely when you make a particularly good joke about old mages and pantaloons. So this old mage walks into a brothel. I want more. What does the old mage do when he walks into a brothel? Okay. When it's time to leave, he gives you a hand up with a faintly embarrassed expression, and you think vaguely about kissing him. Ooh. Okay. You visit the workshop often, spend hours watching him work, trading stories from your past and idly discussing the future. And calmly and instantly discussing the future. Interesting. I like that. You manage to coax him out of his workshop over to your house. Ooh. Your mother is helplessly charmed. Then comes the conversation you have been dreading. You getting any ideas for, for your game, Casey? Because that was kind of interesting. How you can click on the words and get more, or more insight. Then comes the conversation you've been dreading. I have something I need to tell you. Um, that's a heart jumps into your throat thing to say. He puts down his tools carefully, giving you his full attention. Yes? You tell him of the witch, of your bargain, of its price, of your debt. His face is stormy. Children are not currency. I had little choice. A life for a life. If it could have been mine, I would have paid that price. He is still frowning. I want to have children, a family with you. He has escalated. This means I can't say I can't I want to I just want to pay my debt. You put your hands your hand on his. And we will. This is only a detour on the way to starting our family. There would be more children, if he wants them. He lets out a breath, then turns his hand to hold yours. It is difficult, but I understand the importance of keeping your word and paying your debts. And when this is done, we can get on with the rest of our lives. It's kind of it, just accepting it. You marry that spring. In a small candlelit ceremony. And a baby comes fast on its heels. With your mother's wisdom and your husband's support, you navigate the difficult months until your daughter arrives. She's beautiful with this dark skin and your eyes. But she cries oddly and does not eat enough. Her little chest struggling for each breath. You send for a healer. You are not surprised when the witch shows up instead. <laughs> oh, I just now heard the, <laughs> the shade music. <laughs> oh lord, what does the witch want? I hear congratulations are in order, she says. She she says as she leans over to peer at the bundle in your arms, face soft. Ah, but she's very sick. You ask, is there any way to help her? The witch is going to want something. 
I like your life. The witch looks up at you, gaze steady but kind. This is no small illness. Your healers will not be able to save her. If I take her with me, she will be cared for. She will be taught. She will thrive. You look down at your daughter, frail and pained. You look across to your husband, who nods gravely. It must be done. Well, whatever will give her a chance at life. The witch looks grave. I am sorry. I know this is hard, but I also know this is the only way to save her. She waits patiently while you both say your goodbyes. Teary-eyed kisses and soft promises to never forget. When you transfer the sleeping bundle to the witch's arms, when she smiles down steadily, or no, sweetly, at her new charge, you can't help but ask, Will we see you again? Come on now. That depends on you, the witch answers. That's some cryptic knowing. The witch answers that some cryptic knowing smile back and That's a weird line to me. That some cryptic knowing smell back in place. She brushes a comforting hand to your cheek, words seeming to curl directly from her chest to yours. She will be more than healthy, she will be powerful, and then they are gone. A witch's word is good. You can't shake the feeling that all this could have gone differently. Maybe better? Question mark. Well, that was Arthur the Bladesmith. <laughs> what did we think of that one, Casey? The RuPaul shade. Absolutely love it. Shade of it all. <laughs> shade of it all. Well, I'm glad we were able to find out what was going on with, with chat. Okay. I think I'll come back to this one. And, um do the other two dates and see how those end. That one was very interesting. Interesting.